into the scriptures. That's kind of why, you know, why I'm standing here. Uh, and so let, let, let's, you know, Lord, I just ask, Lord God, that right now as I speak, Lord, you would uh, open up our hearts and you would help us to understand who you are and what you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, I, I think, when I, when I think of, uh, you know, as I was putting this together, I, I began to think about my dad. I think about my dad a lot. I had a really good dad, but in general, I think every one of us, you know, have this, I don't I think God maybe even created us this way, to have this kind of heart that we want to please our parents. Like, I, I don't know about you, I always wanted to please my parents, and, and I was not all, I was not the, you know, I was... I didn't always please them. Trust me, I didn't. But, but in general, I, I see people, no matter who they are, even if they have dysfunctional parents, even if they have par even, even abusive parents, I see in their heart, they have this heart to want to please their parents. I know that I played a lot of sports, and, and as a sports player, my father came to a lot of my games, and when I would score a goal or something, you know, I would do something, you know, whatever, if it was amazing or whatever, if I did something good, I would look in the stands and it was nothing better than seeing my dad, you know, just like, that's my son right there, that's my son. And in the same way that we have that kind of feeling towards our parents, I actually believe that we have that in our hearts for God. You wouldn't be sitting here right now, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here if you didn't have something in your heart that said, I want God to be pleased with me. I want, I want God to, like, like Stephen in, 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 in the book of Acts, where when Stephen was standing up for God and he was testifying for God, the people were stoning him, and he was being stoned to death, and it says that Stephen looked up and he saw Jesus standing there. And I actually believe that Jesus was standing there going like this. There's my son right there. There's my son in whom I'm well pleased. Don't we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into my rest? We want to hear that. There's something inside us that wants to please God. And I, I know you're here because of that. And that's what I kind of want to talk about today. And I want to talk about the story of Noah. And we're going to spend a couple of weeks on Noah and, and the ark and all that stuff. So let's, let's read, and, and I'm going to give you an overview of this. So we're going to kind of jump uh, from chapter, it's actually chapters 6 through 8 of Genesis. And so let me read, and hopefully I do a good job reading. We'll see how that goes. The Lord <clears throat> saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and every inclination of their thoughts and uh, of the human heart was evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he ever made human beings on the earth, and and, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race that I created. And with all the animals and all the birds and the creatures that move along the ground, I, for I regret that I ever made them. Boy, what a, what a grieving heart the Lord has here. And he says, but Noah found favor in his eyes. And so we get this picture of God kind of looking down at what he has made. And I don't believe he's looking down like uh, mad. I believe he's looking down, he's grieving, and he's just looking for some piece of hope. Something. He's looking down, and all of a sudden he sees Noah. And he says, Wow, there is a, someone. And he and it says, Noah found favor. In his eyes. I mean, imagine, don't you want to be one of those people that in the middle of like the worst situation, in the middle of the most difficult situation, in a crowd that's, that's just full, baby, full of chaos, God looks down and goes, there he is. There's the one. There's the one I need. There's, don't you want to be that person? I know I would want to be that person. You know, I was always the person that was sitting I was always the person sitting on the bench in the sports game. <laughs> and like, you know, you see the coach turn his head because he knows he's got to put a sub in. You know, it's like, send me in, coach. I want to go in. You know, don't you want God to look down and say, there he is. There she is. That's the one. And you find favor in his eyes. That's what's going on in this thing. And that's what Noah's doing. And it goes on. It says, no, be, and it t tells you the reason why. It says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless, uh, excuse me, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with his God. And so, 
So no, so God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all the people for the earth. Uh, excuse me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both of them and the earth. So make yourself an ark. Now, if you know anything about the story, this was like 50 years or so or more uh, before the rain was ever to come. And the first thing I could just say as we look at this passage, the first thing I can learn is right away is, is if, if I'm like Noah, if I'm like Noah, there's a good chance that God is actually going to alert me to any problems that's going to come in the future. Don't you want to be alerted before the problem comes? I'll never forget. It was this really strange thing. I don't know why I'm on sports today, but I was, I was playing uh, in a basketball game, and, uh, and we got the rebound. It was basketball, and I, and I was running the court. And there was a guy behind me defending me, and something inside my brain said, don't slow down. Even though the ball was kind of like short, something in my brain said, don't slow down, and I didn't listen. And I slowed down, and the guy stepped on the back of my ankle, and I ripped my knee. I ripped my MCL, ACL, and it just totally tore my knee apart. It was a warning ahead of that. Don't you want a warning ahead of time before trouble comes? Can I get an amen? And we all want that, right? We all want that. That's why they call them accidents, because we're not ready for them when they come. So... Noah is getting all this information, and then so Noah begins to build an ark. We're not really going to talk about the story as much as the end. So Noah starts building this ark, and he spends all this time, and he, he builds the ark, and then all of a sudden, you know, he takes all the animals, he puts them in the, in the, in the, in the ark, you know, for those that don't know the story, and then the rain comes, and, and everyone else dies, and he's in the ark for, you know, for a while, probably several days, seven, 70 days or so, something like that. I forget how many days. Anyways, and then the earth dries up, and it says this. The first day of the month of Noah's uh, 600th and uh, first year, the water dried up on the earth, and then Noah, N Noah then removed the covering of the ark, and he saw that the surface of the ground was dry. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wives and his, and his wife's sons and all the animals of the, and all the creatures that moved along the ground and all the birds, everything that moved on the land, came out of the ark, one at a time. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And taking some of the clean animals and, and, and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. And it says this, and this is what I want to concentrate on today. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of the humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood, I will never again destroy all the living creatures as I have done. And there is just something absolutely, I don't want to use the word magical, amazing about this offering. There is something that happened during this sacrifice that was just absolutely amazing. First is, it says, he said in his heart. It says, the Lord said in his heart. Now, in my limited research, there is no other place in the Bible where it says, the Lord said from his heart. It talks about man saying it. it talks about all the, but it never ever says it other than this place where it says, the Lord said from his heart. So this, this sacrifice Something was so special in the sacrifice that it says that, that that phrase actually means from the innermost being of God. From the innermost being of God, God spoke because of what Noah did. Now, how many here want to do something in relationship with God that causes God to speak from his innermost being? This is so special that, that this, this offering was something so amazing that it just literally, in a sense, it changed God's heart. It, or it just did something to God. The second thing is that this offering did something that caused God to make an eternal, eternal declaration. An eternal, he said, never again. And not only did he say, did he make an eternal uh, declaration, he made a covenant. How many here want to 
do something for God or with God or give him a sacrifice in such a way that he makes an eternal declaration over you. Can I get an amen? Who doesn't want that? I want that. I, I, I mean, I can't imagine. You know, I know I looked up in the stands and saw my dad like clapping. Man, if I looked like Stephen up and I saw God clapping. Or when all is ended and I hear, oh, I want to hear. Don't you want to hear? Well done, good and faithful servant. I mean, those words are so, so pretty. We don't want to hear, be gone with you, for I never knew you. And you know, we don't want to hear that, right? We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that from our earthly parents. We don't want to hear that from our heavenly father. So this, this sacrifice was just so amazing that God said, never again. He makes an eternal declaration. And then this offering, this sacrifice that Noah gave, it's really interesting. It changed everything, but changed nothing. Now, what am I talking about? This is wild. Genesis 6, right? It says, God saw how great the wickedness of man was, right? Well, he says that, right? He says he saw that every inclination of his thoughts of the human heart was evil. And then after Mo Noah does this sacrifice, it says, Never again will I curse the ground because of human beings, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil. Nothing changed. The earth did not change. Not one thing changed on the earth, but everything changed, in a sense, in the heart of God. That offering did something so amazing that God actually literally, I don't want to say changed his mind, but he like just said, okay, I'm going to give humans another chance. And never again will I do that. Never again. Even though I look down and I see the exact same thing, what Noah did, that offering that Noah gave, because of that, I'm going to make this eternal covenant with man. How many want to make an offering, a sacrifice, or do something for God like that? That will actually cause God to just make a declaration, and it will just, even though nothing changes, everything changes. That's the kind of thing I want. Because this story uh, of Noah is actually not about Noah. It's about the heart of God. It's really about the heart of God. And, and, and how God kind of relates to man. And so today, and then next week we'll talk about some other things, but today I want to ask the question, how can we, how can our sacrifices be a sweet aroma pleasing to our Lord that touches his heart and he speaks from his innermost being? How can we do that? Because if Noah did it, we can do it. Can I get an amen? Okay, so we're going to look at a couple of things. First, I got to be honest with you. If we want to do that kind of thing, it starts long before the sacrifice is made. It starts long before. This, this, this change of God, this, this amazing thing that happened in God's heart that, 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 that Noah did happened long before he gave that offering. It started way back when it says, the Lord saw and he had favor in Noah. In Noah, why? It says because Noah was righteous and blameless and walked faithfully before God. Imagine this. And no, because this happens to us, right? Today is Sunday and you are here and boy, that worship was off the charts, man. I, I was so blessed by that. I really was. And I just was, I mean, when we were pouring out, I was like, I'm pouring my heart out, man. I, God, I, I just want to give you it all, God. And I, I was just really pouring out. And I was giving God, an, uh, uh, you know, a sacrifice of praise, right? Can I get an amen? That's what we were doing, right? Imagine if we started tomorrow morning getting ready to give him a sacrifice of praise next Sunday. Imagine if we started early in the week and said, God, this week I'm going to walk faithfully and righteously and, and blamelessly with you, Lord God, because on Sunday, next Sunday, I want to give you such a sacrificial offering that touches your heart. And I'm not just talking about Sundays. I'm talking about, in general, if we begin to start early in our lives, 
trust me, your sacrifice later will be so much greater. Young people, if you walk righteously and blamelessly and faithfully with the Lord now, when you get old and fat and gray like me, your sacrifice of praise will be so sweet to God. It'll be such an aroma that it will go up and it will be powerful and it'll touch the heart of God. Trust me, the earlier you start, the greater, the sweeter the smell of the sacrifice that you give him. I'm reminded of a couple of parables. You know the parable of, uh, of the, uh, the, the, it says, Jesus said, uh, well, I'll just read it. Uh, easier if I just read it than I say it. Matthew 7, therefore, anyone who hears the words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams uh, uh, rose, and the winds blew and, and beat against the house, yet it did not fall. And we know what happens to the other one. It says, if they don't put their words into practice, it's like building their house on sand, and then the rain comes. And what's interesting here is it says, they built, they, the wise man built his house on a rock. Now that takes time. That takes time. And so he's building his house on the rock. And then it says, and then the rains come. You see, a lot of times we want to offer up a, a sacrifice, an offering, it's, whether it's praise or we want to offer up the prayers at the time when the rain starts. I did this in, in the first gathering. I'll do it again. Uh, forgive me. I, I don't have two hands, but I'm going to use two hands on this. So, so I, I, we deal, I, I deal with like, you know, sometimes I deal with troubled marriages, you know. They have problems, you know, and, 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 and they don't, I don't say this to them, but in my mind, I honest, I'm saying this. So just so you know, if you come to me and this is your situation, know that I'm actually doing this. So I'll go like this, you know. Wait until the boat was at the bottom of the ocean. Why didn't you come to me when it was just leaking? See, we wait until disaster strikes, and then we look for the help, and then we, need, then we want the wisdom, and then we, 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 we want the help, and we want to have things repaired. Start now. Then you don't have to repair. Can I get an amen? Start now. Start building your house on the foundation now. So when the rains come, don't tell me. Don't tell me there weren't people banging on that ark. But it was too late. It was too late. See, they laughed at Moses, at Noah. Maybe they laughed at him. Maybe they said, that guy's crazy. Maybe they said, oh, you know, another day. But when the rains came, it was too late late you know my grandfather he he would often um well i would witness my grandfather all the time my grandmother was saved i, I, would, I would witness to my grandfather all the time and he would reject me all the time i can't tell you how many times and, and i remember carol was with me that day one day i was with him and i said and i said i said grant i said i said you know i told him about jesus again and, and my grandmother was like dell don't 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 say anything because she always thought it would hurt my feelings and it's like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to keep telling him. So, like, he, and so I said, Grant, you can say whatever you want. I want you to have Jesus. And he, he rejected Jesus again. And the Holy Spirit fell in that room. And I began to prophesy. I just, it was really a prophetic moment. And I looked at it. I said, Grant, I said, you're going to get a chance at the end of your life, right at the end. God's going to give you a second or two to be able to accept him. And, and, and I want you to just call out to him at that last moment. And he said to me, he goes, I'll think about you, Donald. I said, no, don't think about me. I said, you think about Jesus. Well, my grandmother's pa uh, pastor used to come over because um, she couldn't, she was, she was like 90 something at the time. And, and so he used to come over. She loved communion. So he would bring her communion, and they would have communion together. And that, la that night, he, he came over, and he said, hey, why don't we ask Dell? That was my grandfather's name. Why don't we ask Dell to come on in? Because he would always go in the other room, because he never took communion. And, uh, and, and my grandma was like, no, he always says no, he always says no. And she said, well, he goes, let's ask him. And that night was the first time ever he took communion, and he died. He went in the, ne he went in the next room, fell asleep, and died. You know, and, and, you know, thank God for that. I'm so thankful. I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing him in heaven. 
But we honestly don't know when that time will come. Can I get an amen? We don't know. We think we're healthy. You know, in January, I'm running up the hill on the third hole in the golf because I run when I play golf. Not anymore, Carol. I don't. Just, just don't listen to me. The doctor said don't run anymore every now and then. Anyways, so I was running up the hill, and all of a sudden, boom, my heart started seizing up. It was, it was getting tight, and it didn't stop. And I was on the fourth hole, and I called Carol and said, I'm in trouble. You know, thank God I'm here. But we don't know when this tick is going to stop. We don't know. So don't think you're going to get it like my grandfather. I mean, he, in a sense, was lucky. Why wait? Why wait for the rain? Start now. Start building wisdom, listening to the Lord, building on what he says now so when the rains come, when death comes, all you're going to do is see his glory. Can I get an amen? Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait because you just don't know when. So, yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is not only uh, start early. That's how you make a sacrifice and an offering that's beautiful, that's sweet and smelling. The second thing is that, not, I want to read it right, not only was it a pure offering, because it says he took the clean animals, not only was it a pure offering, the offerer, was pure. The offerer, the person who was giving the offering was pure. You know, I was driving, one day I was in, it was in the States and I was going to McDonald's, I think it was, I was with, the, I was with my daughter and, and, and I'm almost done, trust me, I'm almost done, I know what the time is. Um, I, was, I, was, I was at, the, at McDonald's and, and I didn't know this, but Carol had taken the money out of my wallet, so I didn't have any money. We already had ordered the stuff, and, and I, got the, I got the order, and I was like, oh, I got to do here. And I looked at Rachel. Rachel was about eight years old at the time. I said, hey, Rachel, you got any money? She goes, yeah, I got $10. I said, give it to me. I paid the thing, you know. And my daughter's not stupid, right? Eight years old, you know. Next day, what does she say to me? Dad, you owe me money. You know? And I'm sitting there going, wait a minute. Who gave you the 10 bucks in the first place? You know, I gave, him the, I gave her the money, and she gives it back to me, and then she says, I owe but that's a lot like our offerings to the Lord. He's already given it all to us. And now we're giving him an offering. I believe a lot of times when we're giving him something or we're doing something for him, he's not really looking at the offering or what we're doing. He's looking at us. And when the offerer, when the person giving the offering is pure, when he gives his offering, when he does what he wants, what, what he's doing for God, when he sacrifices for God, that's when it's sweet smelling fragrance to the Lord. That's what gives a sweet smelling fragrance. It says about Noah, and, and I'll have the worship team come out so then you feel like I'm ending. Come on, guys, come on out. Three beautiful words. It says he was righteous. You know that word righteous there? It actually means like just and fair in his business affairs with others. So it's not a moral thing. He's not talking, they're not talking about, he's saying he was just with those he dealt with, with his relationships. He was fair. He was righteous with all the people around him. He didn't cheat. That's what it says. I like this verse. It says, the eyes of the Lord search the earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So you see God in the same way as Noah. He's looking around the earth, and he's like, there's a committed man. I am, I'm, pouring in, I'm pouring in encouragement to them. I'm giving them strength. They're committed. I want to give them so much strength they can stay committed. Some of you or some of us sometimes we're not committed at all, and then we ask God for strength. Not that he won't give it to us, but you understand. Noah walked... Uh, blamelessly, it says. That means wholesome, uh, unimpaired, innocent. I love that word. He was like innocent in his heart. He was innocent. He had an innocent heart, a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Third one is Noah walked faithfully before his God. I'll stay on the sports analogies. The sports analogy, what you do in practice, you do in the game. What you do regularly as a habit is how you build the foundation. And then when the tough times come, you'll be able to get through it. 
He who is faithful with the little things will be faithful with us much. And I would say it this way. He who is faithful with the little things will be strong when times are tough. Walk faithfully with your God. So how do you give, how do you give God an offering that's so sweet and gives such a fragrance off to God that just will cause his heart to speak to you? Start now. Okay, maybe you screwed up yesterday. You know, I love that. I was so blessed when we sang that song. Can't go back to the beginning. Don't know what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle. Start right now. You can't do anything about yesterday, but you can start right now. Start building right now. Isn't it beautiful that God forgives you of your past? Start right now. Maybe you've never taken a step of faith in the Lord and you said, you know, you say, I, I want to start following Jesus. Start now. Start now because I tell you right now, if you start now, you'll be in a better shape tomorrow if the rains come. Secondly, do the first things first. And I'm going to talk about that next week. It says, as soon as Noah got out of the ark, he gave the offering. Done with. He did it right away. And then third, walk blamelessly, righteously, and faithfully. And then God will look down and find favor on you. He'll see you and he'll look favorably on you. Can I get an amen? Let's pray. I want to ask before, as we're praying, as we're getting ready to pray, if there's anybody here that wants to start their walk in God. They've never, they've never taken a step of faith and they say, you know what, I, I want to start walking, try to walk faithfully. I have no idea what that means, but I do want to like, just try to follow Jesus. If you've never done that before and you want to start today, I want, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to, is there anybody here? I want to pray for anybody who, amen. I want to pray for anybody, amen. I also want to pray for anybody who says, you know what, I need to start building. I need to start building on that foundation now. I've been kind of delaying. But I want to walk with God now. I want to, I want to make my path straight and be faithful to Him. I, I haven't been faithful and I want to, be, if that's you, I want, I want you to raise your hand. I want, to, I want to pray for you. Is there anybody here? Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. All right. All right. Lord, I pray for these people right now. Oh, you're so good, God. You're so good. So good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. So good to me. God, I can't believe.